My job this afternoon is to start with introducing the first speakers we have with us today, Kelly Williamson and Bill Dahlbeck. Over the past two years, NCHA has been working closely with members to integrate advocacy and communications efforts to support hospitals in transforming our work to meet new federal mandates and continued budget constraints. This year, as we embark on a plan to reform the Medicaid system in North Carolina, the messages we are communicating to our elected officials, our business communities, and the patients we serve will need to be consistent and focused. NCHA recently completed an in-depth research project to determine the direction those messages need to go to help hospitals succeed not only in protecting our ability to remain financially viable, but also in achieving the patient-centered, outcomes-focused vision for healthcare that is our future. At this time, I'd like to welcome Kelly Williamson and Bill Dahlbeck from APCO Worldwide to share the results of that research with us. APCO is a public affairs and communications agency that supports clients in a variety of business sectors all over the world with corporate and executive positioning, issues management, communication strategies, and message development. Kelly, Bill? Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. I can appreciate that research and data and numbers after lunch can be a little tough, so we're going to try to keep this entertaining and interesting and uh, get through this. So, um, we have some exciting things to share this afternoon. Um, just quickly, again, I'm Kelly Williamson. This is Bill Dahlbeck. We're part of APCO. It's a, we're basically a public affairs and uh, corporate communications firm. We help clients um, all across a lot of different sectors. We do a lot of work in healthcare throughout the country as well as in North Carolina and have, have had the opportunity to work with several of you in the room. Uh, in a nutshell, we basically spend our days helping our customers or clients protect or defend or enhance their reputation. Uh, to put us a little bit more in context, we're also the f uh, firm that helped co-create the Alliance for North Carolina Nonprofits uh, with Jeff, uh, you mentioned earlier today, essentially to help preserve and protect nonprofit tax exempt status working across the nonprofit sector. Thank you to many of you who have helped us with that cause and will continue to help us with that in the days to come. Um, so today we're going to talk about the research study that we've recently conducted. Essentially, clients of ours and across the board, I'm sure you're familiar, use research in four primary ways. The first way is to better understand your audience and what they think of you, what they like, what they dislike. Understanding what they think of you will help you better communicate to them. Second is to really dive deep into an issue and to understand what their, their understanding is of, of not only of you as an organization, but as you um, on a particular issue. Third is to frankly better communicate. What are the messages that we need to uh, really hit home tailored to a specific audience? And then fourth, um, it can also be extremely helpful in determining data points as you're communicating. So in the case of the nonprofit um, uh, discussion, eight out of 10 North Carolinians think nonprofits should not be taxed, should not be pay sales taxed. Extremely helpful when we needed that in the legislature. Um, what Bill's going to walk you through today is primarily a um, qualitative and quantitative research project that kicked off late December with the bulk of the work happening in January. Essentially, the, the work is, was focused on two things. First is to better assess the value of hospitals. What do people think about you? What are your sticking points? What are the key triggers to help you enhance your reputation? And what are the, some of the things that perhaps you're saying today that may not give you as much of a reputational boost as you would expect. So we're going to dissect kind of the DNA of how we talk a little bit. And then the second piece is really looking at um, some, uh, legislative issues, specifically Medicaid expansion. Uh, what do folks know about it? What are their reactions to it? How better to take their understanding and weave that into our messaging? We'll talk, we'll talk you through the findings of those, both sections of that report, and then we'll, talk, we'll conclude with really what, are, what, what does this mean and how do we adapt what we're saying and how do we really weave this into our communication and advocacy efforts. We conducted two things. Late December, we did a, what was equivalent of three focus groups. It was an online focus group across the state of North Carolina, very diverse set, rural and urban, equal, and a political affiliation, age, and those kind of things. Uh, we're happy to share the breakdown of that with you at a later time. And then, in, and then in January, really the bulk of January 16th to 26th, we conducted an in-depth uh, online, again, survey. Our audience in these things were two, twofold. One, we spent a lot of time looking at the business audience across North Carolina, small to mid-sized business predominantly. 
and then general public as well, again, across the state. Um, I'm gonna let Bill take the bulk of this. We have about 30, 40 minutes of presentation. Uh, feel, we're gonna save the back end for questions and, and whatnot, so um, just write them down, or if, certainly if uh, we can always come back to something as we go through this. So with that, I'll toss it to Bill. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Kelly. Uh, it's really a privilege to be here to be able to work with uh, NCHA on this um, and to really um, look at what is it that people uh, here in North Carolina, uh, how they feel about hospitals and how they feel about this particular issue. Uh, and so to start, uh, you know, my background's in campaign politics. Um, I've uh, run bond campaigns uh, here in the state in many, many years ago. Uh, and so I like to look at uh, this research from a political perspective, um, especially when we've got the legislative issues going on. Uh, so the first thing we usually do is look at kind of the landscape and how do people feel about things. Uh, and when you look at it overall, uh, people feel pretty good about the, the overall health care system uh, here in North Carolina. As you can see, uh, strong majorities of both business leaders uh, and the general public uh, think that the overall, uh, have a favorable impression of the overall health system here. Uh, but there is a dichotomy that's going on. Um, what you see is uh, from a quality perspective, uh, a lot of people uh, feel very good about the quality of the care that we're getting here. And, and you know, for those of you that were certainly next door and, and talking about uh, quality and how the focus is on quality and patient satisfaction, delivering what the patient wants and when they need it, um, they're feeling like they're getting really good quality and you can see that in the numbers. Uh, what they're not, whoop, well, I don't know where we went there. Uh, what they're not so happy about is the cost. Uh, and you can see a majority of people uh, are unfavorable about the cost of health care in North Carolina. Uh, and what do they mean by that? So when we talk to them a little bit more about what cost is, um, certainly for the individual, it's what they pay in their health insurance premiums, it's what they pay in their out-of-pockets, it's their co-pays, it's any other uh, out-of-pockets they're paying. You know, what is it that they're paying for? But when we talk to the business leaders, they have the same concerns. You know, they're not just business uh, men and women, they're consumers as well, they're patients, uh, they're concerned about those costs, but they have that extra burden of the cost that it costs them to provide health care to their employees. And so they talk about that. Uh, and so right from the beginning you can see uh, that cost is a huge issue for those people here in North Carolina. They think the system overall is very good, love the quality, but there's cost, and you're going to see that that reverberates throughout the whole survey. Uh, we asked people, uh, what do they think are the top issues facing hospitals uh, here in North Carolina? Uh, and you can see cost, again, dominates this slide. Uh, the rising cost overall of providing care, uh, whether it's through new technologies, whether it's the, the wages of your employees, uh, whatever, you know, the, the supplies that they're getting, whatever it is, you know, that's certainly a big, a big issue. Uh, but notice that they also are very familiar with um, the uncompensated care that you provide uh, to the community. And actually, when you think about it, when we talk to them more about what it is that they think about hospitals, that being that community uh, bedrock and being there for people, uh, regardless of their ability to pay, is certainly something that they recognize that hospitals do, but they also recognize that there's a cost that comes along with that. Now, the issue that we're most in, uh, interested in, and you heard the governor talk about this, uh, is Medicaid expansion. And you can see that it's much lower on the list of what they think, of what both business leaders and the general public think are issues facing hospitals. And so that provides a little bit of a challenge for you. Um, and so again, when you're talking about Medicaid expansion, what you need to think about is how do you tie that to the cost that they already see facing your systems and your hospitals. Uh, and so when you're talking about Medicaid expansion, you can't just talk about it in the, in the, uh, in the absolute. You have to talk about it in context and talk about it in the context uh, of the cost that, that they're facing and that, and that they recognize that you're facing uh, to make it more tangible for them. Uh, a lot of what we did in the survey up front was look at the reputation of hospitals. And you can see that overall favorability is very strong for hospitals. On a zero to 10 scale where uh, 10 is very favorable, zero is not at all favorable, mean score 6.5 among business leaders, 6.3 among the general public. Uh, we do this, uh, question for all sorts of entities, all sorts of people, groups, brands, across a variety of different uh, um, sectors. Uh, and what we found is that the most you know, well-respected organizations uh, score 6.5 or higher, 
Uh, so you can see that hospitals are right at that baseline. Uh, groups that score at 7.0, 7.5 or higher are uh, very well regarded, ones that you'll hear a lot about. Uh, and then, you know, 8.0 and above is really reserved for the, you know, kind of the best of the best. Uh, think about, you know, L.L. Bean in, in Maine, you know, usually scores in the nines. Um, again, it's a very, uh, very high threshold. Johnson & Johnson uh, in the healthcare world usually scores above eight uh, on there. So again, hospitals are very well regarded. Uh, they have good uh, uh, image um, and from which to uh, talk about issues. Uh, facing the state because of how people think about them. When we ask people why they gave them the rating they did, they talk again about the community service, the quality of the care that you provide, the fact that you're always there when they need them. Uh, so lots of good positive uh, qualities that they engender with hospitals. Uh, but as you look at this, uh, there's a couple of things that stand out. One is, you know, thank goodness you're not the health insurance industry um, trying to, you know, launch some kind of a major campaign in front of the legislature or the public. Um, but secondly, if you go, you know, further to the left, you see the technology companies uh, and how and what high regard they're held. Um, you know, obviously this area, you know, with the Research Triangle has is, is been bringing people in for a while. Um, actually, one of the things I also did in North Carolina is worked with, uh, which was then the North Carolina Technology Association, trying to bring more tech companies uh, to North Carolina. Um, and I know that they're spreading throughout the state. Uh, have a very high regard for technology companies, which is very consistent with other research we do across the United States, uh, technology companies and, and the ability that they bring to, um, uh, to people are certainly enhancing them. Uh, but as you think about you know, potentially building a business case and a business coalition to lobby uh, in support of Medicaid expansion, you know, one of the groups that you should think about is technology as a leading face. Um, there's some other things that we're going to show you in this and other findings in the survey that will reinforce that. Uh, but again, I think you know, just by looking at this, it shows you that, that they're a, a potentially a very good ally and one that maybe people might not think about talking about a health care. Yeah, they would think that you know, physicians would be talking about health care. They think about hospitals talking about health care, uh, pharmaceutical companies even, but they probably wouldn't necessarily be thinking about technology companies. So it could be a good, good one to, to look for. Um, we asked directly, what are some ways that hospitals could help improve your impressions of them? Um, and again, you'll see a lot of things um, kind of talking about costs. Um, again, the free and reduced care. I mean, I know that's a message that a lot of you talked about. It's certainly a message when Kelly and I were working uh, with the Alliance for the Nonprofit, saving the nonprofit staff, that was a major, issue, major message in, in that campaign. Um, coordinating care, what we, just, what we were just talking about, you know, the ACO model uh, and really being able to coordinate care. Um, but it's more about coordinating care. What you need to be talking about, obviously, uh, is not just about the cost. I mean, they know about the cost, but what, they are, what patients really care about, what business people care about is the quality, right? And so how do you tie the coordinated care back to that quality issue? And again, advocating for Medicaid expansion falls much further down um, but again, there are ways that you can tie that to the issues that are more resonant to them, right? Talk to them about, you know, how the, trans, the, um, the uh, uncompensated care, you know, that will be less of an issue to you if more people have insurance. Um, talking about the coordinating care and being able to get um, these people into insurance plans, number one, get them into these models, number two, that helps to improve their quality of care, their quality of life, helps to reduce costs. It all works in, in a circle. Um, so again, how do you make, take that issue, tie it to things that people already recognize are important, uh, and use that in your communications? Uh, we also did, as Kelly alluded to, kind of break down the DNA of, of hospitals. So what is it that people think about when they think about a hospital? Uh, and so we started that in the focus groups. We asked questions. We came up and identified 14 different factors. Uh, that people said um, influenced their uh, opinion of hospitals. Uh, and then we did, and we went through in the survey and asked them how well hospitals perform on these 14 factors. Uh, and I'll show you those in, in just a second. Uh, we then take that and with uh, advanced analysis, come up with an impact score, which is uh, in a percentage it's a percentage from 0 to 100, it all adds up to 100, so it shows you what each of the factors 
what their weight is for your reputation. So you can see which ones are more important to focus on, which ones are less important to focus on, which ones you're doing well on, which ones you're not doing so well on. And that comes up with your overall reputation. And we'll show you that in just a minute for both audiences. Here are the 14 factors that we looked at. The list in gray are just the shorthand we have so we could map those out. We do uh, quadrant analysis to kind of show you the impact and the performance. Uh, something I'm sure you're used to looking at for a variety of different data. Um, and then what you see on the, on the right is what the actual respondents in the surveys reacted to. So they didn't react to the word uh, effective, for example. They reacted to the statement. Uh, and so this kind of shows you what, what they came up with in the focus groups, what we took to the survey, uh, and then what kind of is uh, comprising of your reputation. Um, so among business leaders, uh, you'll see um, first of all, to, to look at the map, is uh, the, the performance is on the horizontal axis, so a 0 to 10 scale, and you can see lowest rated at 4.91 to highest rated at 7.48. Um, the impact score um, going uh, vertically, so everything that's above that line are the things that people feel are more important for your reputation. Everything to the right of the bisecting lines uh, are what they feel you're performing better on. Uh, and then right in the middle uh, is kind of where everything comes together. This bisecting line shows you that in a perfect world, uh, everything would align right along that line, right? The expected uh, impact would match up with the expected performance, and it would just fall on that line. And you can see there are some issues that do that and fall right here into this kind of core strength of effective caring uh, in your reputation. Um, and again, <coughs> for business leaders, it's really about bottom line, do, you know, your core strength with them is that you deliver what you promise on. Um, and so your ability to deliver on what you promise is kind of the core for hospitals, is what they ex expect from you. A couple outliers that you wanted to take a look at. Uh, one is trustworthy, which is perceived to have the most impact. Um, again, overall, uh, in a general sense, a 6.4 is a pretty good score, but it lags and it, it's certainly far away from the the line given how important it is of where you would expect it to be. Um, that is really about um, delivering on those promises and being someone that you can rely on. And so again, what you would do if you're looking at this and trying to figure out how to improve your reputation, which already starts out pretty strong, but if you want to improve it more, one strategy would be to focus on what's most important to people and figure out how to be perceived as doing a better job of that. What you might do is talk about the effectiveness, how effective you are, maybe talk about your quality staff, maybe talk about the facilities um, so that you demonstrate to them that you're a reliable organization, that you're trustworthy, that you're someone you, they can rely on. Um, the other outlier uh, that may have been a surprise for people is the treat all, which if you were paying attention to the last slide is really the fact that you provide care to anybody regardless of their ability to pay. Um, and again, we talked about that's a message that was certainly uh, present in the nonprofit discussion down here. It's something that hospitals talk about all, all the time. You saw in previous slides, you know, uncompensated care is certainly something people are aware of. They know that you do it, um, but it doesn't seem to have a lot of impact on your reputation, and so why might that be? Uh, well, as you look at it, as we think about it, um, it's really just an overall expectation that all hospitals are gonna do that. Everyone's experience is gonna be that they're gonna treat you, and so there's not a lot that you can do to differentiate yourselves. There's not a lot you, more you can say uh, to get that to be uh, necessarily more important because it's just a base expectation. Uh, and so from that perspective, yeah, it's a message that you probably need to keep saying, but it's not necessarily the only message you have to say. Um, and again, for business leaders, the key message is that you deliver on what you promise. If you talk to them about that, you're going to get their heads nodding, they're going to respond to that, and they're going to want to talk to you about whatever other issues you're talking about. The general public looks a little bit different. A lot of similarities. Um, again, trustworthy is an outlier way up at the top. Treat all is an outlier way down at the bottom. Good values over here. Quality staff, specialization facilities all in a, you know, relatively the same position, less important among this audience. Um, but the other thing that you'll notice is there's a lot more, six out of the 14 really cluster around the means. Uh, and so what that means is, unlike the business owners who are looking at you as both a business and a care provider, 
you know, they're look, they don't know so much. You know, the general public doesn't know that much about your business, right? They don't know a whole lot about it. And so you know, it all kind of melts together, if you will. Uh, and so they need to know a little bit more about it. Yeah, they know that you've got cost pressures, uh, but they don't really know how, a lot beyond that. And so their um, impression of you is a lot more about the staff, the specialization, the facilities. Um, and in here, it's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, for them, if you look about, you know, kind of what your core strength is with the caring, with the, the um, uh, visionary, the quality staff, um, it's really about that community bedrock, that group that they know is going to be there when they need them. If they need you in an emergency, um, you're going to be there for them. Um, they know that you provide public education, you've got health and wellness classes, um, that you're a hub for health care in their community many times. Uh, and so that's really the message that you start with, with the general public, and then you kind of build from there. Yes. Uh, different how. Right, and I think the way you pr talk about the value, what that is, is uh, the measure is actually um, hospitals provide a good value for the price I pay. That second part is the problem for most hospitals. They have no idea what the price they're going to pay is until after the bill comes due. It's one of the most bizarre, I think, marketplaces that you'll ever think of as healthcare, where you go into something and you have no idea what you're going to pay until 15, 30 days afterwards, perhaps. Uh, and so that's one of the issues. And so transparency is certainly an issue. Talking about value is certainly an issue. And I think the way you do it is not necessarily from a cost perspective. The way to get people, oops, the way to get people um, to feel better about the value and to move that up, up this uh, continuum is to talk again about your effectiveness, to talk about the quality of staff, to talk about the care that you provide, to talk about uh, you know, the specialization in the facilities, to talk about the, the care um, and the ability to deli deliver care effectively um, in a, um, a cost-effective manner, that will get the value there. And so right now, you're right, it's absolutely you need to talk about value. I know there's this movement to value-based care. Actually, for another client, I'm doing a lot of work trying to figure out what that means. A lot of people don't know what that means. They have no idea what value-based care is. They think it means that it's cheap care, and that's obviously not the intention. Um, and so, you know, that, that's, there's a nomenclature issue that I could spend a whole presentation on. Um, but from your perspective, you're right. It, you do need to talk about the value. You need to talk about what you're providing. Um, but the way you're going to do that is you're going to be talking about, you know, how you're delivering that care, the quality that you're delivering, the care that the people are getting as a patient um, in your facilities. So, uh, from a recommendation standpoint, again, the uh, key strength is caring. The patient care that you provide uh, is a bedrock for both audiences. It certainly uh, defines who you are. Uh, amplifying trustworthy, again, thinking about ways that you can communicate that you're an organization that can be relied upon. Uh, improving vulnerabilities on honest, efficient, and well run. There are some people, like the business community, that understand that. But there are other, especially the patient community, that don't. Um, and this honest is really about transparency, what we were just talking about. The fact that people have no idea what it's going to cost to go and get a procedure done at a particular hospital. Or if they do, they have to dig a whole lot to try and figure that out. And they're just not really sure. A lot of it is because of the, all the different plans and everything else. I know there's a lot of complexity in our healthcare system. But transparency is something that we hear over and over again in the work that I do for a variety of different healthcare clients about uh, what it is that really drives them crazy about healthcare. Uh, and then finally, uh, recognizing that this ability to treat everyone regardless of their ability to pay is a bedrock of hospitals. It's something that's important. You probably do have to need to communicate that, but it's one of those kind of communications messages that's a checkoff message. It's a message that you have to say. You gotta get their attention, you gotta get their heads nodding and say, yep, yep, I know you do that, and then go and talk about what the message is that you really are there 
to talk to them about and, and what you really care about. Unless it's an issue like nonprofit status where that becomes a, a major part of your message. Uh, but again, generally speaking, you know, everyone expects that that's what a hospital is going to do. So it's just kind of one of those tick the boxes kind of messages as you get into the other messages that are more important on whatever issue you're talking to people about. With that, we're going to move over to uh, the Medicaid expansion issue. Uh, about two thirds of the business leaders um, said that they're familiar with the, with the, uh, the push to start uh, considering Medicaid expansion here in North Carolina. Less than half of the general public are familiar with that. Um, and so one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to uh, set the stage for the rest of the questions that we we're going to ask on this topic. Uh, and so we did some level setting with a statement. We crafted a statement with, with NCHA uh, that was pretty neutral. Um, but as we looked at it, there were two main themes within that. Uh, and we said, well, since we're going to just be giving them this information anyway, we might as well see what they think about the two themes. Uh, the first theme is one about kind of the, the scope of the problem and the coverage gaps that exist. Uh, and you can see, and the second one is really about, you know, the economics of why Medicaid expansion makes sense for the state, uh, the federal reimbursement. Uh, but when we ask people which of these stands out as the most positive reason to expand Medicaid, you can see that they um, overwhelmingly uh, pick the coverage and the access issue. Um, you know, getting more people um, uh, covered by insurance. Um, and again, when we ask them why, it all comes down to um, the community health that, that the incoming chair was just talking about, which is, you know, the more people have insurance, the more they have access to health care, the healthier our population is going to be. And so that's the, the one that really resonates for them. Uh, now, certainly there are audiences that pick the other one, but the majority across all the audiences uh, pick the first one about coverage. We then asked them, you know, just generally, do you support or oppose Medicaid expansion? And you can see in both the business community and the general public, very strong support for expanding uh, uh, Medicaid uh, here in North Carolina. In fact, it went across um, partisan lines in both uh, audiences and ideological lines in almost both audiences. Um, moderates, uh, liberals, and conservatives in the general public Majorities of them all support Medicaid expansion. Majorities of moderates and liberals in the business community support it, but a majority of business conservatives were opposed to it. Uh, and that's consistent with what we found in focus groups. There's this group um, that's very anti-government involvement in healthcare, that's very anti-ACA, um, that just wants nothing to do with it, that wants to see the ACA fail and go away. Um, they just aren't going to support it for that reason. And we asked them at the end, even if we told them a lot of great things about what this would do, we saw a very similar uh, group of people. It's probably about a third of the business community, um, actually, that fell into that group that just did not want anything to do with, with the ACA or the Medicaid expansion. Uh, we then took them through, as I said, 17 messages, um, gave them a lot of great information about why um, uh, Medicaid expansion is good for the state, is good for the people. Um, and you can see the general public went up a little bit, business leaders went down a little bit, not a whole lot of change. So you can see that uh, while we have some good messages and we'll show you what those messages are, um, you know, people are pretty much have made up their mind on this issue. Again, in the business community, the majority support it, but there is this core that you need to think about when you're going to talk to them. Uh, and we've got some ideas about, about what's going on with them. Uh, from a messaging standpoint, um, again, we did some advanced analysis to boil down the 17 messages and to see which ones really resonate. These are thematically what the messages had to deal with. And again, in your packets in the appendix, you can see the exact messages um, that we tested with them. But for uh, the business leaders, it's really about competitiveness. Uh, as other states are starting to uh, expand their Medicaid programs um, and attract uh, new businesses and new jobs to those states. It's putting North Carolina at a disadvantage. And it's also the economic benefits of growth and the fact that you, know, you can draw more employers here uh, if you do this, you, which brings more jobs, which brings more people looking for jobs. So that overall economic growth are uh, the two issues that really drive business, uh, really hitting them in their pocketbook. Um, the message uh, about cost shifting, which again I know was brought up a little bit at the lunch speaking, 
uh, and the whole notion about that being broke and just a model that doesn't work, um, works for a lot of the business community. They get it. But again, for those conservative business people that want nothing to do with government-run health care, nothing to do with the ACA, they look at those cost-shifting messages, and that actually reinforces their opposition because it reminds them of the government involvement in, in health care. Uh, so it's a fascinating dynamic. So again, for most business people, uh, the message on cost shifting and how it's a bad deal that they're paying for all these uninsured people and that Medicaid expansion will help reduce that and take that cost out of their business uh, is a positive message. So you just need to know who you're talking to uh, before you start talking about that message. Because again, anything that kind of triggers that, that pro-ACA um, can be an issue for some business people. In the general public, it's really about um, the coverage gaps that exist. It's about fairness and giving people health care. It's about community health, population health. You know, having this is going to make everyone in North Carolina healthier. Uh, it's going to benefit you even if you're not in this class of, of people that need the assistance. Uh, it's a very um, positive message for the general public. There's a couple of themes that all wrap up into those themes and some specific messages wrap up into them. But again, uh, really makes sense for them. And you can see you've got a, a, a marginal increase uh, in popularity after that. So as we start to wrap up, what are some of the key findings that I want to leave you with today? Again, the fact that uh, both businesses and uh, the general public support uh, Medicaid expansion. Um, you know, as an association, as you think about talking, you know, talking to legislators about this, looking to recruit business uh, people to support any efforts that you might be leading, uh, using that public opinion data can be a positive. It can show that there's support for this. Um, but again, recognizing among the business community, support's there, but it's a little bit softer than among the general public. And that there's one particular, you know, set of business people that really are, are kind of opposed to this. Um, second, that you have the strong reputation uh, and strong standing to really go out and be an advocate for Medicaid expansion should you decide to do so. Uh, but recognizing that there's these technology companies um, that have this, you know, uh, both the, the strong favorability but also the unexpected messenger because no one would think to have technology companies talking about an issue like Medicaid expansion. Um, and so you kind of have that factor in there as well. Uh, from a business perspective, um, again, you know, when we talk to NCHA, this isn't going to be a big media campaign. We're not, you know, if you're trying to draw businesses into a coalition, which again is not necessarily set in stone, it's just a possibility, you're not going to go do that with the media campaign. It's all about retail politics. It's about the personal ask. It's about knowing the people, asking them to come and join you, whether they're in the healthcare setting or they're not. Um, and there's some good messages that you can use with them. And there's some other good tools there. You know, we, we asked them, you know, what type of social media they use. As you might expect, almost all of them are on LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of them are on Facebook. Um, and so we're not saying that you're running campaigns through LinkedIn and Facebook necessarily, but you're using those tools to figure out who knows who and how do you go and have those in-person meetings and talk to people one-on-one -on -one and get them to support this uh, expansion. Um, and again, uh, the best messages are about competitiveness, it's about jobs, it's about the economic growth, it's about dollars flowing into um, North Carolina. Um, and so with that, I will turn it um, back to Kelly to go through what does that mean now and where do you go to next. Thank you. Um, so as we wrap up and then we'll open this up for questions, um, you know, we've, we've been asked so what happens now from here and how this can be hopefully helpful to each of you as you are out in your communities talking to business leaders and um, looking for support and common ground for everyone to collaborate together. Um, first and foremost, we did have an opportunity to share this last week with some of your government relations and public relations folks within your hospitals, because um, it is fundamentally important, I think, that everybody understands the research and can look for opportunities to refine the messages. Um, I know that NCHA will be working closely together with Julie and her team to really look at how do we um, update our messaging, everything, everything from the toolkits to things on the website and, and those kind of things to make sure that we're, we're reflecting this. Um, the full report, there is a lot that goes behind this, probably more than you will ever want to know. 
Um, but we will share that, I believe, at, at some point. Um, and there's a lot of data in there that I hope will be helpful for you. Um, and I look for opportunities to also update your own messaging and your own materials uh, on, uh, uh, at your individual hospitals. Um, and then just finally is that I think most importantly, uh, I, I, what one of the re major takeaways from the research is that it is critical, critical that we tailor the message based off the audience that we're speaking to. And as you all are out talking to business leaders um, and knowing who that person is, what their impression of you is, um, and how to really uh, talk to that, uh, champion the things that work well, and stay away from topics that perhaps would only um, uh, add fuel to the fire, like cost shifting with ultra-conservative uh, business leaders.